So if you find that an AI system isn't working properly for you, mm -hmm. maybe it is giving you biased answers mm -hmm. uh, or it's giving you a different result because it identifies your gender. You wouldn't necessarily know those things unless you engage with the system. Mm. So the more you engage and lean into it, the better feedback you can give it uh, and can kind of give society of yeah. how we want to design these systems. I agree. It shouldn't be up to seven people in Silicon Valley building the most important technology of our generation. But it's really hard to weigh in to a technology into a moment if you have already unsubscribed from it. There is a weird, because I keep hearing this, the more you give it, the better it works for you. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who, uh, you know, they're skeptical. Who am I giving this information to? Where does it stay? Where does it live? Is there security risk in in sharing information? I, even I sometimes, the more I share, the, the greater it is, especially me. I'm, I've been working on a few different projects and I sometimes I ask it questions because I'm curious what it has picked up. I'm like, do you know who you're talking to? And the chat GPT is like, I do, Angie. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I said, OK, but do you know who, what I do? And it well, based on our conversations, I'm assuming that you're Angie Martinez, you're a radio person that like runs down your podcast. Like it, run, it give me a pretty good description of who I was. So part of that was scary for me. But then part of it is like, I feel like, OK, the more I lean into it, the more I can trust the answers that I'm getting from it. But is that? Yeah, that might creep some people out. And I think that that's actually a good skepticism. I think we do want to have conversations. How much data do we want to give these systems? Yes. How much do we want to How give? much, where do we want to draw the line? And it is true. The more you give them, so the more it knows about your life, the less you're going to have to keep reminding it. And then the more proactive it can become. So eventually when these systems become more agentic, which just means they can take action on their own, it could re remember that you do your podcasts on Mondays and already kind of, you know, divert meetings to Tuesdays. It could start doing more things, but then it starts to know more about your life. So we have to figure out what are the new data rules that we want to have in the AI age. And there is a way around this, right? Mm -hmm. If your AI system more or less lived on your phone, so that data didn't go all the way back to Silicon Valley or to the cloud, mm -hmm. then it's okay if it starts to know more about you. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know where that data lives, then yeah, I wouldn't really be uploading my blood tests with my name and my address and, and my your passport, social security number. All of that. And yeah. you know, it's funny, I used a fake name with one of the AI systems for a long time, and it caught it. <gasps> so when I asked a it? question, I used the name Lauren, and I had just a totally different name, and just give it purposely try to confuse it. What system was it? A this one was ChatGPT. Oh, it was. And so, and I was just asking just for the normal things that I do in my work life. And then when I asked it to kind of summarize a bio that I could use from an upcoming talk, it didn't use Lauren. It used my name. So they How? can still piece together. They, How did it know? It has enough data that it's trained on the internet that if it can see enough times, okay, um, biracial Canadian studies foresight and technology lives in New York now. Oh. I mean, that those are enough data points that any system, whether it's a social media system um, or an AI chatbot, could, could gather. Try, yeah. But the fact that it, to see my own name presented, it's like you really can't fool these systems. So that's not going to work. Yeah. So we're going to have to figure out something that's a bit more concrete. And the good thing with social media being such a train wreck yeah. is that we don't have to repeat that. Yeah. Why? Where is my data? I would like to know. Let's not do that again in the AI age. And hopefully we don't. Do not let me forget to go back to the train wreck that is social media, because I really want to get into that. I just don't want to lose where we yep. are right now, because that is so interesting. There are people that are doing therapy mm. with AI now. Some people that I know, they say the therapist is actually better than some of the therapists that they've experienced in real life which to me is scary. And that's a lot of info. That's internal information. I'm sad. I'm angry at my father. I don't trust my partner. Like mm -hmm. personal information like that. Do you recommend sharing that? What do you feel about so, therapy in that space? I'm really skeptical about AI therapists in this moment. I do think there could be a future scenario. Oh where AI systems will be properly trained, guided by therapists and academics, and there will probably be AI systems You still that, believe in the human behind it? I believe in the human behind it. I think if there is a world in which there's no therapist, you get no access to a therapist, whether that's economic reasons or where you live in the world, and so that there is a safe, vetted AI therapist available, that's better than no therapist. 
But right now, these systems aren't trained to be therapists. They scraped a bunch of data from the internet. They can sound human because they were trained on data from humans. So they're going to give you advice that sometimes works and is helpful. Other times, it's nonsense. And <laughs> not nonsense. it's truly absolute nonsense made up high in the sky. And if you don't know the difference, you're probably going to take the advice from both. Got it. These systems aren't alive, right? So they don't actually know what they are saying to you. The statistical patterns and the data that they are scraping presented that answer. You should probably stay in bed an extra hour today. You might be suffering from depression. That could actually sound right, and it could be right. The AI doesn't actually know the difference, mm -hmm. but it heard you say bed a lot. It heard you say break up. It's going to statistically correlate depression in there and give you that answer versus a therapist would actually be able to identify what it is you're going through. Yeah. So I do believe there will be a future where AI therapists could be viable, but we need the actual therapist to be vetting these systems. Yeah. And that hasn't happened yet. Wow. So what do you think for the average person who's not in tech, who's not in, who's like, small town, has a small business, mm. goes home at the end of the day, you know, a quiet, nice, peaceful life. Mm. Why is AI in their life? Like, wh in what ways are they using it or should be using it? You know what I mean? I mean, the small business thing is huge. Mm. Entrepreneurship, AI systems are going to be an absolute game changer. What are all of the things that you maybe wanted to do with your small business, but you couldn't afford to? So maybe you have one person in marketing or that person is nine people. They are the marketing person, the HR person, the operations person. Now you have systems that you could stream for $20 a month that could fill in all of those roles you can't afford to fill in. So if your marketing person was good at the newsletter, but not so good at social media captions, you have somebody for all of that. So I think that's where you're going to start to see some of the biggest results and some of the game changing stuff. Mm. In terms of our day to day lives, I mean, we are busy. I don't want to be on my phone as much as I am. So if I have a system that can summarize emails for me and just flag the ones I actually need to pay attention to, mm. I can just log off social media. How do you do that? Off. How so, do you do that? So I don't know how to do that. And this is kind of where AI is going. So you, there are systems today that can summarize your email. They would still make a little bit of mistakes and you're still giving them that access. But the pipeline with AI is these agentic systems that can log into our apps on our behalf and just kind of run the operations. Right. And again, that's has to be at a time where we feel okay about the data. We have figured out where it lives um, and there's privacy and security, but that's where the future is going. Mm. The future is going to a world where we have less devices because we don't need to be on them. Right now, the- That makes me happy because it this gives me a little anxiety, which we'll get to later. It's so, scary to think about. Yeah. But right now we have to pick up our phone and scroll on it because the internet and everything we do on it was designed for humans. If I have a system that I can just talk to, hey, did anybody flag something important in that PowerPoint deck I just sent over? No, no need to look at it. I don't need to pick up my phone. And I think that is a future that I'm, that's one part of the future I'm really excited about, less being notified, mm -hmm. consolidate and summarize. And if I don't need to be available to the world, I hope to not be. Wow. What are you using to consolidate and summarize? I Do mean, you like not, not like to share specific? Uh, no, no, I'm good. I mean, I already have a very strict relationship with my device. Mm -hmm. So I'm only on social media, maybe 20 minutes a day mm -hmm. um, at most. And I post and then I'm basically gone. Um, and even with my phone, I don't check it until maybe 10 a.m. And then I don't check it again after 6 p.m. So I'm already really intense about the boundaries. Uh, so Why is that? Because I know it's not great for our mental health. Mm -hmm. We're not a species that's been designed to be available to a billion people at once. It's very unnatural. Um, I do see the data on how social media rewires our dopamine reward system, and it does become addictive, and you do kind of crave that feedback loop. Um, and it's not necessarily an environment I feel great on. Mm -hmm. And I know I think better when I need to get some deep work done, writing and things. If I wake up and I check my email, my brain now goes into slot machine mode. Uh, so if I can just refrain from that until I get the deep work done, I actually execute better. Mm -hmm. So I'm really strict. And it also just keeps me awake at night if I'm scrolling. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to bite that from you. I'm going to try that. Try it. It does give me, it stresses me out. Stresses me out. Yeah. And then you see that one strange comment or that one email that you didn't deliver on. And then you're going to bed and your mind is a circus. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't need to be available to the world. Uh, so I'm just going to choose to not be. 
But eventually being able to have AI kind of mediate that for me is going to be a game changer. But that's the part I really don't understand. Mm. How do you, how does it mediate it? Like, what, is there certain programs that you use specifically or you just know how to use program your phone? So it's not at a state yet where I'm letting it kind of, I'm not hooking it up to my, all the different systems. So I don't have ChatGPT hooked up to my email, hooked up to my Google Drive, hooked up to my social media. It wouldn't be good enough to do that yet. But it does do things like... So, so wait, all of these things you're saying that you do on the phone is all... You can do that with ChatGPT? I wouldn't say yet. You can hook up ChatGPT actually as of last Thursday uh, to things like your PowerPoint slides, to the data that you use for work, to your Google Drive. And so that you, just happened. Yeah, as of last Thursday. It's called ChatGPT Agent. So and then you could say, okay, I know that there's a bunch of raw slides in my Google Drive, turn that into a slide deck and pull those financials that I was also supposed, to, also supposed to do the budget for my small business, didn't have time to do that, pull that for me together, put it in a slide deck. You could shut your laptop, go get coffee, and it would go do it. That exists today. What hasn't been... Stop, <laughs> please slow down. You're making me dizzy. So if I wanted to pull all those things, how is it mm. accessing all... Do you have you, to program it? You would have to give it permission. Permission. Yes. And so you, you do that. You trust it. I don't. Oh. <laughs> well, you want me to? You no, think, no. You're just saying you can't. This is what is available, and this is why it would be helpful but for small businesses. You, you don't look at the phone. Oh, after, that's me that. just doing that. So I don't have a system now that can... Oh, okay. So I don't but have... But you said, you said, you say to your email, you say, has anybody responded to uh, my blah, blah, blah? So no, that's the goal. Oh, so I, you're not so doing that. Yet. Not yet. Okay, got it. So right now I'm just, I'm the one going through my email, but I'm just slow and not responding a lot because I have so many boundaries. Got but it. the goal is how does AI give us our time back? Yeah. And in some ways, some aspects are mental health back. That's where I can't wait to slot AI in. What is the most amazing way that you personally are using AI? Like the mo how is it just like, I can't believe it does this for me. Like what is the, what, what do you use it for? Oh, it's, what system have you figured out with it? Like just something that you use it personally for. Personally, I would say anytime I need to set up, build, print, and I'm confused about the environment around me, I no longer spend time going to a website and looking up instructions. I just take out my AI system, put it on video mode, show it what I'm looking at and say, explain. What is the next step I need to do? How do I actually plug in this printer? Where, where do I go from here? And I just have it walk me through everything. And I don't waste any time trying to follow instructions. I just want to hear what I need to do. So you use it as an instruction guide now. Do you use an instruction guide. Sometimes I'll take a photo of what's in my fridge and say, you know, what could I put together based on what you see here? Yeah. And it would come up with a quick recipe. And you use what the most? ChatGPT? I, I use ChatGPT the most, but I also use notebook lm so this is a an ai system from google mm. and so say you have a bunch of things you need to read so say you need to read for an upcoming podcast and somebody has written a bunch of blogs they have some youtube videos you could drop all the links of this person every podcast they've ever been on every blog they've ever written and the ai system will analyze it and give you a summary of it all or will turn that into a podcast you could listen to to prep for the interview. So you could say, okay, summarize everything they've said, turn this into a podcast, I'm gonna to listen to it on my way to work. And AI would do that. Mm. So I do that as well, because I have to do a lot of science heavy work. So I'll give it all of the scientific papers and ask it, turn this into a podcast. And then I'm listening to it as I'm going to a conference or something. That's pretty great. Uh huh. It's called what? No. Nope. That one, it's Notebook LM. Do you use all of them? I use most of them. And there's perplexity for deep research. And if somebody is overwhelmed, ChatGPT, Google, I heard about Microsoft, don't worry about it. For the most part, they're very similar. So just pick one, the one that you remember. Yeah. And for now, it doesn't make too much of a difference. They are similar. Yeah. 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 And that's why the competition is so fierce. One gets ahead. Yeah. And then, the and then another company is like, yeah, no. Yeah. I have I use some of it to like, even for the pod, there's like apps that sometimes I edit on mm -hmm. that will ask, I can ask it for suggestions of clips and it'll give me, they're not always, mm -hmm. I, you still need the human. The human still has to be there, but it does help if I'm stuck for something, I can't think of an idea or I don't remember something. I'm like, give me like three clips from this. What, what are the points? And, yeah. and it'll, and it'll cut it up real quick, which is super easy. Yeah. Or give you an idea that you just didn't really think That's about. That's something that I didn't think about. Yeah, to get for you sure. started. Yeah. You can't just leave it and then hope you're going to have an A plus 
day yeah. with whatever it creates for you. For more episodes, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, comment, and we'll see you on the next IRL podcast.